Let's design a filtration and sanitation system for your DIY cold plunge. I'll talk about what you need to think about when you're plumbing, along with frequently asked questions that I get when you're using a system like this. My name's Joe with DIY Cold Plunge. Let's get into it. To do this, you're gonna need to know how to work with PVC. I've got videos linked below if you need guidance on that. And you'll also need the GE filter housing and the barbed venturi from DIYcoldplunge.com. You'll also need PVC elbows, tees, male threaded fittings, unions, and spa hose, along with primer, cement, and thread sealant. The plumbing design on this system is actually pretty straightforward. Water will enter the plumbing assembly, split to either the venturi or the filter, then meet back up and return to your tub. And what that specifically looks like depends on your cold plunge setup. Different designs or plans might require different things based on the space available in the mechanical area. Different chillers might mean different orientations of these fittings. But no matter what, the key to this system working is that you have enough flow going to the venturi to create the vacuum that will pull ozone into your system. So your design could end up looking something like this, or like this, or even like this. But no matter what you do or how you configure it, I believe that it's best to prioritize flow going to the Venturi. And what I mean by that is set it up like this instead of this. And the reason why is that the Venturi fitting condenses down. And in doing so, that creates the vacuum that pulls the ozone in. And again, because it condenses down, there's still plenty of motivation to send water through the filter. And that's just one example of how these different parts and components play off of each other to get your system to function properly. It's also important to size your pump appropriately and ensure that the rest of your components are configured correctly and in the proper order. I've got videos up on my channel to ensure that you get this right. Or if you wanna skip the learning curve altogether, you can check out the plans at DIYcoldplunge.com. So again, my recommendation is to prioritize flow directly toward the Venturi. The outflow or return side of this plumbing setup isn't as important, but overall, make sure to avoid redundancies, unnecessary twists or turns, adding additional components, or just long plumbing lengths overall. Long story short, if you make things too complex, you're gonna lose the vacuum at the Venturi, which we don't want. Let's move on to FAQ because I get a ton of questions about this system. The first and most common is why not just put the Venturi in line after the filter? The simple answer is again, the Venturi condenses down and restricts water flow. So setting it up like this would greatly reduce the overall flow rate in your system. That will obviously affect the ability to circulate water, which can lead to cooling inefficiency and create backflow pressure that can damage your pump or other components in your system. So overall, slowing the flow like that is just not a good idea. But then your water isn't actually being filtered. I mean, the water goes through the Venturi first, right? Once water pumps through your system, goes through filtration and sanitation, and returns back to your tank, it mixes in with the other water that's in your tank, which is obviously unfiltered. So no matter how you set this up, whether it's in a loop or in line, your water won't truly be filtered using that logic anyway. The only way that you could truly filter the water in your cold plunge is to empty your tank through a filter into a separate tank. So then how is the water filtered? Your plumbing setup for both cooling and filtration relies on the fact that your water turns over many times throughout the day. Trust me, this setup has been used by myself and thousands of people. It may seem a bit unconventional, but it works. But what about utilizing a Venturi loop? That would look something like this, and it would increase your overall footprint and complexity in your plumbing system. And remember, these tubs are pretty small, so you only have so much space to begin with. But let's still talk through this idea. Setting it up like this, you will need to add a ball valve to direct water to the Venturi, which in theory is fine to start with. As your filter collects debris, the overall flow through it will slow down. That means that you will constantly have to monitor and adjust the ball valve to ensure that you're sending proper water flow to the Venturi to create the vacuum. This is just extra hassle and maintenance that I personally don't wanna deal with. And if you don't stay on top of it, water can backflow through the tubing into your generator, damaging it. And in contrast to what we just covered, the more that your filter collects debris, the more water that it sends up through the Venturi. You should obviously stay on top of your filter changes, but as your filter collects debris, you don't have anything additional to monitor. What does overall maintenance on a system like this look like? Overall, I recommend using 50 micron filters and replacing them every four to six weeks. Run your ozone generator one to two hours per day. And I've got videos linked below if you wanna better understand that stuff. And quick warning, if you search my channel, you're probably gonna stumble upon this tutorial. Those were the early days of DIY cold plunge. It was over two years ago. I've learned a lot since then. So just use this video as your guide for filtration and sanitation. I've mentioned and linked a lot of videos throughout this segment. And if doing all that research seems a little bit overwhelming, check out the plan 
plans at DIYcoldplunge.com. I've got step-by-step -step beginner friendly tutorials showing exactly how to do this. I also sell a number of key components to finish your build. So if this video was helpful, I hope you can consider doing business with me and shopping on my site. I've got content coming up on the DIY sauna, additional components breakdowns. So let me know what questions you have in the comments. I'm Joe with DIY Cold Plunge and we'll see you at the next video.